Good evening, everyone. It's me, Keiji. Before I begin tonight's story, I would like to know if, what do you guys feel like if I decided to do two stories a week instead of one? To me, my big thing was I don't want it to get stale, but then again, I don't want to leave you guys hungry for more as I wait on one week or so. But I forgive me for um, last week because it was so hot because I could not function, my brain couldn't function, so I could not read any or do recordings for this. But now that things are cooler, I'm back at it. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about two stories a week or just keep it on a one week pace. Leave it in the comments to see if you like it. But that's all for now. And now, on to the night story. The early stages of production of the famous computer animated film Toy Story were a complete nightmare. The production was in sort of a development hell until the infamous Black Friday incident. Disney harassed the new animation studio Pixar constantly. They were in the production of release the film and they wanted the results as quickly as possible. Disney tried everything to eliminate Pixar's effort to deviate from the Disney formula, even at times threatening to shut the production down. Disney sent notes on a revision of, the, of what they thought would improve the film. They insisted through their notes which all read, Edge. The film needs more Edge. The people working on the film at the time struggled so hard to maintain all the Disney notes and demands. Once a week, they were all required to fly across the country to the Disney office to present the, with them the progress. Every time they were met with the same response, Edge. The film needs more Edge. Pixar revised the film so hard to meet the deadline as the result of some rather interesting changes. In order to achieve Edge, the film became quite a lot darker. Woody became a wildly unlikable character, much more angry and far less comedic than the film than the final film. Bo Peep's role in the story was far more prevalent, often flirtatious towards the male characters, and is the first to accuse Woody of pushing Buzz out the window. Buzz Lightyear like was referred to at this point in production as Lunar Larry. He was highly reminiscent, reminiscent of the older superhero, talking in a deep voice and even more deluded and ignorant of his surroundings. The other toys were relatively unchanged, save for minor enthusiastic differences. Pixar employees worked literally 24-7 non-stop. Director John Lannister joked on one, more than one occasion that he had the best parking space in the office because his car hadn't moved for over three days. Some of the writers in the storyboard artists began to suffer from chronic insomnia. A few writers reported seeing visions of Buzz and Woody taunting them on their lack of progress, chanting, Edge. The film needs more edge. Many of the illustrated writers quit doing the stress it was putting on their personal lives. Much of the distress of the remaining crew, by November of 1992, there were two of the five writers left and one of the three storyboard artists. The remaining historical artists were named Ralph Thomas. He joined the Pixar team in the writer in the writer in 1987, working on short films such as Tin Toy and Knick Knack. He and at the same time did some storyboard work for The Nightmare Before Christmas with fellow artist Joe Rantit. Joe calmed down with a serious illness and hadn't been to work in a week. Ralph worked constantly in fear of the inevitable correction by Disney. More edge. More edge. Each presentation meant another row of sleepless nights of rewriting and redrawing of the same characters in the same bedroom over and over and over. It was maddening. One morning, John Lannister, Andrew Station, and the other higher-ups on the Pixar came into the office and told everybody what happened at their last meeting. Disney felt that things were not looking very good for the film and demanded that, in less than a week, they have to complete the film, the story reels, storyboards with audio, with massive revisions. They were generally groaning and whining from the, la from the crew, and they went back to work. Ralph worked hard than uh, any all involved. Sometimes, at 2 in the morning, one and the writers would walk into Ralph's office with a pack of newly written scenes. More to draw? And with more drawings, but more scratch, scratch voice work. When a film is still in the writing storyboard stages, artists will, will do temporary voice for their story reel. He had Disney vague instructions racing through his mind. More. 
more edge, edgier, more. We want results, people. Edgier, this is a business. Faster, more edge, move on already. He thought to himself this exactly. The film needed an edge. It needs to be darker, more cynical. It needs more adult humor in situations. It needs an attitude. Of course. Ralph, you goddamn retard. How could you not have seen it sooner? Edge. All of those hundreds of hours bent over a desk, and all you needed was an edge. Why didn't you listen sooner? He gave the film an edge. The story reel was fl was flowed over the domain crew to the head office at Disney. The date was November 27th, 1993, Black Friday. When the film was brought into the this Disney screen room, the reel was about 48 and a half minutes long. The movie started out as a western style shootout between Woody and Andy, resulting in Andy being shot down. It revealed that this was just a game played inside Andy's mind. The film continued on with a little problem about the first 20 minutes or so, though several gags seemed off of the overall tone of the film. For example, Mr. Potato Head would pull one, out, one of his eyes out and kick them under the Bopi's dress for a look-see. There were several scenes of Woody yelling at the toys to stop caring about Buzz, Larry, and to pay attention to him, accumulating as an as insult or minor acts of violence. The scene come where Andy can only take one toy to Pizza Planet, and Woody push Buzz out the window. Woody offered to shake the hands of the Buzz, Larry, only to throw him out the window. There was a stock smashing sound. The only the other toys are shocked and antagonize Woody for what he has done. Woody showed little remorse and screamed at Slinky Dog to make the toys stop harassing him. After much yelling, the toys grab Woody and toss him out the window as well. He fell onto the ground and did a low thump. Cheering was heard in the interior of the house. The quality of the storyboard became much less refined and almost like chicken scratch. Woody gets up and sees Buzz, Larry. Buzz's body was shattered in, on impact. His arm and leg were broken off and located only a few inches away. There was a large crack down the middle of his chest revealing a mass of buttons and wires inside. He gave all sorts of electrical twitch motions in his head. His eye looked as though they were about to pop out of their plastic sockets. The twitch stopped after a few moments as Woody looked in fear of what he has done to Buzz and runs off. There is a jump cut to the scene where the two get stuck in the claw machine. The story where artist is back at the normal level of quality. The machine is filled with sunglass wearing pizzas and opposing the aliens of the finished movie. Buzz is completely unharmed and intact. The scene is almost vibrant in the final film. Sid, the antagonist, is in control of the claw, was wearing a yellow t-shirt and smoking three cigarettes at once. The claw grabbed Woody and Buzz, Larry, putting them in the clutches of Sid. There is another jump cut to once again returning to the chicken scratch style of the artwork. The scene is indicated in Sid's room. Woody look around in the room in fear. He tiptoes around the room and collapses after seeing one of Sid's mutant toys. The reel then jumped to once again to the unrelated test animation of the characters running. The few seconds of Buzz Larry running in places. A few seconds of the Woody running, then nearly a minute and the two running together. The footage appeared distorted and Spanish text was present on the screen. It looked like clay models that got that got life. No one, no one's friends, life were seen. And now comes a shot of completely naked Woody with automatically corrected features. Standing in front of the black background and the trademark Pixar ball is rolling around the distance. The animation now was in traditional animation style of typical 2D Disney film. Woody stares directly into the camera while his flesh begins to rot away with the expression in his eyes, which remain intact, Woody began to moan in a low voice. What remains of his lips curled into a smile, a bit of flesh peeling off of this happens. He lifts up his decomposing arm man manually and waves into the camera. His figures dig into his eyes, dark blood oozes out of their sockets. Woody began to scream and growl. Don't you want it? Don't you want it? Don't you want it? 
He digs so deep as to rip the, ent the entire top half of his head off. Woody gave a sigh of relief and began eating the flesh off the skull before tossing it aside. He writes the words, Edge, on the screen with his rotting fingertips. The remaining 15 minutes of the reel were pencil scribbled accompanied by a shrill scream of a young woman. The words, Edge, were burned into the project screen. The screening ended in complete silence. Chairman of Disney at the time, Jeffrey Kunzenberg, walked out of the screening quietly, telling his colleagues, Notes. They were following all the notes they were given them. Upon returning to Pixar office, writer Pete Dogger found his body on, of Ralph Thompson in an enormous pile of paper in his office. Further analysis found that he, the cause of death was a heart attack brought by a lack of sleep and stress. The papers were all storyboard and animation cells of the final coherent scenes of Woody, while the words Edge scrolled on the back of each one. Following the Black Friday screening, Disney became far less involved with the film, to which Pixar was finally given the freedom to make the film their way. The film went on to be a huge success with the critics and all the box office. And the Black Friday incident? Today still remains very much a mystery. So, my fellow readers, my fellow hearers, listeners, even though this story is work of fiction, it can help but wonder what kind of stress that the animators and writers have to deal with with big corporate companies with big corporate demands. And it's amazing how the human mind can be so fragile that it can make you go into a darker side of your mind and warp you into something that you've never seen yourself the side of yourself before. <laughs> Have a good night.